beautiful Wednesday that we we gather in the house of the Lord and uh, I, would, I would love to welcome us to our service today for those of us who are in person and for those of us who are watching online uh, you are welcome and you are welcome to, to worship the Lord with us and to to listen to the word of God. So, uh, we are going to pray as we start. Lord, we are grateful this evening. We are grateful for gathering us here yet another time to be able even to, to fellowship, oh God, and to, to listen from you. We pray that you will be with us from the start all through to the end. May you May you walk with us and may you even speak to us through your word. And this is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so uh, as, we, as we get to a moment of worshiping the Lord, and just, I just want to, to remind us that there is, there is nothing that catches God by surprise. There is nothing that the Lord can't do. And so... Um, we might be we might be facing or undergoing tough times we might be having challenges here and there and we might feel like god is so far away from us but today i want i just want us to to forget all that we have for a while and allow the lord to speak to our hearts and just just worship the lord because of who he has been and his grace in our lives up to this moment that uh, we are confident no matter what we go through no matter what we face we serve a God who is faithful we serve a God, a God who who will bring us out of even the deepest and the deepest of pits that we think we might be in praise God Amen. so today I just want us to just to worship the Lord just to give the Lord honor and praise for being faithful to us and for the grace that he has given us. So uh, just worship the Lord. Just open your mouth, open your heart and, and give the Lord the glory. Give God the honor because of who he is. Jesus, we are grateful this evening. We, we praise you and we give you honor because there is none like you. We thank you, O oh God, for carrying us to, to this far. We exalt your name and we give you praise, Jesus, because you are worthy, O oh God. At all times, Jesus, you are worthy. In the good and bad times, you remain to be God and you are seated on your throne, O oh God. Today we worship you, we give you praise. We exalt you because of who you are in our lives. We thank you because of being a faithful God. We thank you because of being an everlasting father in our lives, O oh God. You are a good father, and there is nothing that you cannot do. And today, Jesus, we tell you what to worship, that we will receive the worship and the praises of our hearts this evening. And Lord, our, our, our worship for Jesus will come to you, and you will accept our worship this evening, O oh God. We glorify your name because of your doings in our lives. We give you praise, Jesus, because there is none like you. That even in our darkest times, Lord Jesus, you are our light. You are the strength that we call out to God, Jesus. Oh, Lord, there is none like you, O oh God. Where else can we go if not in your presence, O oh God? Where else can we run if not for the Lord, your name, O oh Jesus? That we call out your name because of your name. Thank 
Yes, we can lift the Lord up tonight. Mwambie, how far are we? Lord, we are glad to sing before you. We are glad to worship such an amazing living God. And we are so much glad that you have just graced us with yourself too and presented yourself as our very own God who we are only to worship. And so we are glad. We are glad. We appreciate you tonight. We give you praise and honor for you are worthy and there is none like you. And for this we pray in Jesus' name. You can appreciate the Lord. Yes, we can do it better. 
I think that's for music team. We can do it for God. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ministers. Thank you. The Lord bless you and do you good. We we welcome you all. We are glad that you came today. Those in person, thank you for coming. The Lord bless you and do you good. And those online, we appreciate that you've spent some moments just to be with us. Uh, I don't want to waste more time. I'll welcome Vivian, who's hearing God's word. And then we'll proceed from there. We can appreciate her as she comes over to share God's word. Yes, you can appreciate her as we... Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Praise God. How are we? We are fine. Yes, my name is Vivian David. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I am humbled to be here. I am happy to see you. Yes, feel at the feet of Jesus. Feel welcomed as we get to share the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, and um, as you are singing that song, um, Kua Buana, Akuna Ambaya Neza Fananisha Nae, I was, I was, um, in a way telling God to create in me a heart of worship praise the Lord and even as we as we get to the to the to the topic of today that is his own what a privilege when you 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 get the ownership of being God's son God's child then he's going to grant you a heart of worship praise the Lord Moyo wa ibada in all that you do. Bwana asifiwe. And I would like us to pray before we share the word. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are before you at this time. We thank you because there is no one who can ever be compared to my Father. You reign in majesty, my Lord. You are our Abba Father. You are the only one that we can cling to, oh God. You are the only one that we can call upon this evening in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, King of all the glory, oh God. Even as we are ready, Lord, to uh, to hear your word, oh God, we pray. Open our hearts, oh God. Open our minds so that, Lord, we may receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord. We thank you and we honor you, my Lord. Let your presence reign in this place in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, King of all the glory. And it is through the mighty name of Jesus we pray, believing and trusting in your name. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, so we are still continuing with the Galatian series. Yeah. And uh, we've been learning a lot from the book of Galatians. Work or work, through the bitter hub, God's mercy. We've been learning a lot, yeah? Are we together? Yes. So uh, today, our topic of today is his own. What a privilege. Praise the Lord. And we are going to read through the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23, to chapter 4. Verse 1 to 7. Yes. I'll be reading two as you read two verses. Sawa, sawa? Yes. Uh, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come will be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Is it an heir or heir or something like that? Hey. Okay, fine. Praise the Lord. Buenas, if you Yes. Um, as I've said in our topic today, that is, is on. What a privilege. It brings the aspect of belonging. Praise the Lord. And it means a sense of belonging in which, uh, in, whereby we belong to God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and for us to, uh, when I talk about what a privilege, it brings the aspect of showing how advantageous it has been to us to belong to God. Praise the Lord. And in that, considering all, all of that that I've said, maybe a question that I would like to pose to us, you can, you can, you can just ask yourself, how does it feel for you to be regarded as his own? How does it feel for you to be called God's child? Praise the Lord. And um, there are five key things that we are going to look at as we, as we go through the verses that, are, that we have read above there. Praise the Lord. And the first key thing that we look at is that we are no longer slaves to bondage of religion. We are made, the second one is, we are made children of God through Christ Jesus. And the other one, we are all equal before him and treated on the same bar as his children. And the other point is spirit that confirms our heavenly legitimacy, that is Abba Father. And um, the other, the last one, a good thing and favor to be called children of God. Praise the Lord. So as I was, I, was, I was reading through these verses, that is uh, from the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 23, all the way to chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Like, um, it, was, it was a point that Paul was distressed that the Galatians, they were being persuaded to adopt a circumcision and the observance of the Jewish law as necessary for them to be included, to be God's covenant people praise the lord and in a way they were they were looking at the law that was there that was set and they, they, they the law that was there in a way it yes it restrained them from sin but then it it lacked the power to liberate them from sin praise the lord and as i was i was reading through the the verses uh, we'll get to the first point that I was talking about, the uh, no longer slaves to bondage of religion. And we'll get this clearly from the verses, that is from verse 23 to 25. Verse 23 to 25. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Verse 25, kindly. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer un under a guardian. As we look in this context, it's... it's uh, it was a letter that Paul was writing to the people of Galatians. Praise the Lord. And they were being reminded but that before uh, the coming of the faith, before the coming of faith, uh -huh, they had been slaves to the religion. But now, that the, uh, in that point of them knowing the truth 
and understanding that they no longer ought to live in the old times, that they no longer, uh, they don't have to uh, live in the ways of the past. They have to live in the point of them believing Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Buena sifiwe. And as I was, I was reading the, uh, through those verses, I was looking at the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Praise the Lord. Yes, it is not by, by works alone, but then it is by the aspect of us believing and having faith in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And they were being reminded that, um, that they, they are no longer, now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Like they are not... They are not constrained in that part that they were being held back in the past. Praise the Lord. Now that Jesus had come, now that salvation had come, they had to believe in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And this is where it brings the aspect of them being called the children of God. Buena sifiwe. And when you believe, when you have faith in the Lord, then it automatically brings an action in it. Faith is equal to action. But then... The action in itself is equal to adjustment plus obedience. Praise the Lord. When you believe, when you believe, when you have faith in God, when you believe that Jesus Christ is your personal savior, then you have to make an adjustment by changing your lifestyle, by living in accordance to the way the word tells you to live. Praise the Lord. And after you making that adjustment, you obey what the word tells tells you to do and and um, as I was I was going through the, the verses that is the verse 25 that uh, they are no longer enslaved or bondages okay fine uh -huh. now that this faith has come we are no longer under a guardian praise God and because of that assurance that they are no longer in bondages that's when now we get to the, uh, to the second point that where they were made children of, of God. Praise the Lord. I believe we are together. We are moving together. Cindy? Yes. We'll get to analyze all those points as you get to know how we have been called to be his own. How he has made us to be, like, to be of importance. At the point of you believing in God. Praise the Lord. So uh, I would like us to read from the book of John, chapter 8, verse 31 to 34, and also 35 to 42. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Even before I continue, like we are told that the moment that we realize that Jesus is the Christ, is the Savior of our lives, the moment that we realize the truth that has been set in the Word, that is the point that we will, we will be set, set free. Praise the Lord. Uh, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that you shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to to eat forever. Praise the Lord. Yes. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your Father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you are Abraham's children, say Jesus, 
then he will do what Abraham did. And it is, you are looking for, for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Praise the Lord. And as I was, I, was, I was reading through these verses, I was getting to understand that um, it, is, it is only at the point of us allowing God to reign in our lives. Praise the Lord. Allowing God to take charge of our lives because he's the best setter of our lives. He's the initiator of our lives. He's the, he's the one who guides everything that happens in our lives. Praise the Lord. And... Um, as you even look at the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 4, Romans chapter 7 verse 4, we can open that together. We have uh-huh, Romans chapter 7 verse 4. So my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that you might bear fruit for God. Praise the Lord. So uh, uh, we have been released from the law bound. We have been released from the law and now we have been binded in Christ after believing Jesus Christ as our personal savior. Praise the Lord. And uh, the second point, the second point that I was saying, we have been made uh, children of God through faith. And we'll get this clearly from verses 26 to uh, to 27. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Praise God. Yeah, so we 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 have been made children of God by faith. And we are told that we have clothed ourselves with Christ, so we ought to live as Christ living. And in this point, I was, I was trying to look at uh, the, way, uh, the, the way we are required to live as Christ, or the Christian living, the way we, we, we are urged to live in accordance to the way Christ lived. Praise God. And I was going through the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 15, though I will not read uh, the whole part of it. I will not read the whole part of it. Uh, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality impurity lust evil desires and greed which is idolatry because of this the wrath of god is coming you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things and they are mentioned there, anger, rage, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. I said I will not, I will not go through all those verses. So um, as, you, as you read the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 15, then you'll be able to, to get to know how we are, we are called upon to live as Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we are, as, you have, as you are told in the, uh, in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. So in Christ Jesus, you are all are children of God through faith. So if you want to belong to God, it all starts from the point of view having Jesus in your life. Praise the Lord. 
it all starts from the point of view having faith in God and believing that he is our Abba Father. Praise the Lord. It all starts from you making a decision and, and aligning yourself in a point that you give your life fully to Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And when you give your life fully to Christ Jesus, then he will work on you. And I want us to read the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14 to 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Praise the Lord. Yes, as, as I was reading those, uh, through those verses, we are told that for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the ones who are being called to be the children of God. Praise the Lord. And the Spirit that you received after you believing in Christ Jesus, after you believing that is the person, is the, is the Savior of your life, then uh, it does not make you to be slaves more to, uh, it doesn't make you to be slaves to fear or to what you are living for back then. Praise the Lord. But then it makes a turning point in your life where now you live for Christ. Where now you make a change in your life and you, and you live in accordance to the way God wants you to live. Praise the Lord. And it brings us to that point of being adopted as a child of God. It brings us to that point of us realizing that you have been called to be children of God. Praise God. Yes. And uh, now to the third point. The third point. We are all equal before him and treated on the same bar as his children. We'll get that in verse uh, 28-29. Verse 28-29. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his purpose. Praise God. Yes. In all of this, like uh, this was uh, Paul when he was writing to the, to the people of Galatians uh, and he was telling them that uh, for all of us, all of, the, all of the people who are there in that context, that is, the Gentiles, whether they were Gentiles, whether they were Jews, so long as they had faith in Christ Jesus, so long as they had given their life to Christ Jesus, so long as they had they'd surrendered their life to Jesus, then they are all one in Christ. Praise the Lord. Yes. And we are, we are called to be heirs according to, to, the, to the purpose of God. Praise the Lord. And uh, I was getting an, uh, something from the book of um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. And First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 24. I'll just read through them. Then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. So we can start with F, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Here there is no Gentile or Jew circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Praise God. Christ is all and is in? Buona sifiwe. Yes, Christ is all and is in all. Praise God. Yes, he is all, he's the only one that we, we, we ought to have in our lives. Praise the Lord. Yes. And um, 
Therefore, aha, rudi hapo nyuma kidogo. Uh, therefore is God's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience praise God yes now that we are we are we are God's chosen people we have to make sure that we clothe ourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience praise God yes now we can proceed to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 24 While our presentable parts need no special treatment but God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it Aha uh-huh. for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility praise God Yes. So we are we are reminded that we are all equal before the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Yes. There is no one who is greater than the other one. Praise God. Yes, we have all been called to be sons, to be children of God, to be his own. It is it is something that amaz- amazes me in a point that um every every morning like I I wake up and and remind myself that that you know you are a child of god you know that that god loves you that's why you are able to wake up you know it is not by our own self it is not by our own selves for us to be able even to be here and listen there is somebody somewhere who is not able to even sit who is not able to write down the notes that you are writing praise the lord but god has loved you to a point that you are here praise god and that's why he's telling you that you ought to let go of anything that could be holding you back praise the lord you ought to let go of anything that is making you to go away from him to triple on the way he just needs you to have have that assurance that you are his own praise the lord and um the fourth point fourth point a spirit that affirms our heavenly legitimacy that is abba father and i will join uh those two points no no i will not join them let us um we'll find that in the in the book of galatians chapter 4 verse 1 verse 1 to 6 yes what I, i am saying is that as long as an heir is under age is not different from a slave although he owns the whole estate the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father So also when we were under age we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world but when the set time had fully come God sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law that we may receive adoption to sonship because you are his sons God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts the spirit who calls out abba father praise god yeah as as we are we are we are we are we have been reading those verses from verse 1 that is chapter 4 that um you'll find that as an heir mtu ambaye anatarajia kupokea kutoka kwa ni kupokea mani itwa itwa vipi Yeah, kurithi. Yes. Ule mtu ambaye amekwa kama arithi labda mali fulani. Like you'll find this person even if he's still under age, even if ni kama Asaf, lazima lazima angoje mpaka afikie ile age. Praise the Lord. I believe we are getting this point of being an heir. Praise God. And As I look it in the context of now or in the context of today or in the context of how we are right now unless you let go of what is holding you back 
unless you give your life to Christ Jesus then bado hautarithi praise god you will not reach to that point of being called a child of god praise the lord but you know something that amazes me is that god loves you as you are that's why he has called us to be here at this moment that's why that's why he has he has, he has um He has called us to be in his presence at this moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we but me. Hallelujah. Yes. So he has he has he has loved you as you are. He has called you to be his own. He has is able he has been able to redeem you and adopted you as his sons. But then you have to make that move of believing in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And uh is assuring us is is reminding us in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 4 you can you will read it at your own time and in also Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 where he tells us that we have to live by the spirit praise the lord yeah and in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 now i've just summed it up it says for those who are led by the spirit of god are the children of god The spirit that you received does not make you slaves or you to live in fear again. God is calling upon us because we have been called and uh to be his sons, to be his own. Like we are called to let go of the fear that we have in life. Praise the Lord. We have to let go of the burdens that we have that are bothering us and acknowledge that we are his. And for sure nothing can separate us from the love of God. He has loved you to this point. He has loved you as you are. He has no he has he has appreciated you as you are. Praise the Lord. And that's why even when you you read in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, starting from verse 4. That's where the point of uh, the privilege of us being children of uh children of God comes comes in. We have been redeemed. We have been forgiven. He has loved you. He has called you to be his own. But what are you what are you doing about it? Have you surrendered your life to God? Have you given yourself fully to the Lord? That is a question that you can ask yourself and as a the last point as we look at the last point what a good thing and favor to be called the children of god it's a favor for us to be called the children of god we get to be heirs for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love he predestined us for sonship to uh through Jesus Christ in accordance with his will and in him we have redemption through his blood that is the forgiveness of sins we have to allow him to reign in our hearts for us to be called his own praise god and uh we can just read uh from the book of ephesians for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through jesus christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which has freely given us in the one he loves in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of god's grace praise the lord that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure 
which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ in him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will praise the lord in order that we who we the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory you can stop there yeah 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 so um tonight i want you to know that as we, as you are as you are going through those verses from the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 12 like uh, we are being given we are uh, it's explaining the advantages of us being called the children of god we have been redeemed he has put a seal a mark that you are his child he has forgiven you he loves you as you are and is the only friend that you can have praise the lord and as i was i was just uh, thinking through this topic there was something that was coming in my mind that i want us to look at an example of two parents who have gone to school and they have gone to look at the performance of their children and the first parent apart from toto The, the child has maybe a C plus and the other one has a C plus yes see C plus and the other one has a C minor yes then this parent of the one that has a C plus afike pale amwambie when him jinga you couldn't get a B and this other parent we look at this child who has a C minor and The parent tells the child, "I know you can make it. I know you can go to you can get a C, you can get a C plus." Among the par- uh, between the two parents, who is a friend to their child? That's a question to you. Praise God. And it clicked in my mind that unless you be a friend of God, to a point that you can be able to tell him anything you can be able to tell him this you can go to him with a with a genuine heart then we'll be staggering on the way praise the lord is the only genuine friend that you can have is the only abba father that you can cry to i want you to know that you are his and you ought to give your life fully to him and surrender everything that concerns you to him maybe you could be the one who has has let go of his hand maybe you could be the one who has let go of his ways but he needs you to come back as his child because you are his own that's why his love pursue, pursues us each and every moment and even as i conclude i'd like to call the praise and worship to come at the front you are chosen not for second you are a child of god he loved you as you are yeye ndiye rafiki muhimu kwa maisha yako hakuna mwingine ambaye angekupenda ila yeye I don't know what is in your heart. I don't know what what could be bothering you this evening. But I want you to know that you are you are of importance. Maybe you've never felt the point of having identity where you come from or where you live. But I want you to know that you are his child. You belong to God. You are a child of God as you are. Yes, maybe you might have gone through discriminations in life. You might have gone through people criticizing you. But then you have to know that you belong to God. 
And when you belong to God, you become an heir. Unakuwa mrithi. Because God is a God of love. He fills your heart with love. He fills your heart with joy. His joy surpasses every human understanding. His peace surpasses every human understanding. He's able to to uh, to mend you in a, in a manner that you not be held back with anything that could be slavering your life. And as I conclude, I would like us to read from the book of John chapter 8 verse 36. That is six, that is six. So if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. It's up to the sun. It's up to you believing in Christ Jesus. That's when you'll be set free. Praise God. I don't know what you're struggling with this moment. But I want you to release yourself to him tell him i am here ready to be molded by you ready to be molded by you just the same way as a, as a potter molds a potter is able to mold a pot god told jeremiah that's the same way that i will do to you i will mold you to the way that i want to mold you and i will use you as the way i want to use you but then it is that point of us allowing him to be our abba father ndo maana akatupenda hivyo hivyo na yeye ndiye rafiki mwema jua maisha yetu
husband and bless the love of God and lift him up. Tell him I love you so much, God. You could die for me. You made me. You are all, and I'm glad that I have a privilege of being loved by a God who is great, who is mighty. us and and we are his own and he calls us his own 
the sheep of his flock. It's amazing. Amen. Thank you, Sister Vivian. Thank you, music team. You can appreciate these brothers and sisters. Too. And you can also have a seat for two minutes. Thank you. Amen. Wow, wow. I'm not taking much time. May I just have an announcement? And then I'll welcome Pastor to, to call our friends to greet us. And then they will, he will lead us in the words of grace. Just an announcement, um, an emphasis. Um, we encourage all swaps to come for bonfire. So please, on Friday, uh, now we are announcing as a pastor. Buona <laughs> sifiwe. Please come for the bonfire. Uh, don't find reasons of not coming. Don't travel. Don't plan journeys. Don't go to see your boyfriend that night. Um, come on Friday um, for fellowship. Amen. Um, if you miss it, I think you will, we could struggle bringing us again together, especially the bonding aspect and, and helping us to be a team that can move forward as one force. So please give our chairman, Bernard and Josephine and uh, who else in Sukunta. Um, if you've not sent the 50 bob, please throw, uh, sorry I'm mentioning household issues to everyone, but uh, please throw the 50 bob to them so that their work can be easy. Amen. How many will not come? Sukunta si mwona. Mwona hakuna mwenye mwenye mkono. Ebu giuza. Sukunta si mwona. Ni mwona ya miri ya mpeke yake. Hakuna mwingine. Sasa, si mwona hawa tuwote. <laughs> Omesema watakua. So, um, the Lord bless you and do you good. Um, I will welcome pastor to say hi. And welcome one of our friends to greet us. Thank you. You can appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you, pastor. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Hey, buona sifiwe. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here today. I'm not always around on Wednesdays, and uh, today I happened to be here, and I feel what you feel. I think the in-person service can never be compared with online uh, at all. It's like East and West, and uh, those that are online and you're within Chuka, I think you can only do yourself a lot of service if you will come and worship the Lord in person. Um, today we have a friend. Um, I want to invite him to greet you. He's called uh, Deacon Wairia. He's uh, one of our deacons in uh, GCI Nairobi. He came to visit. And uh, yes, Wairia, karibu sana. We've been, we've been running up and down with him uh, since morning. And we thought it's good to be here. Salimia watu wa mungu. Amen. I'm so excited to be here once again. My name is Isaac Wailia. And uh, I know this man of God very, very well. He's an amazing man, blessed with wisdom. And uh, once he left us, we felt it. We felt the departure of... Yeah, I'm saying we felt the departure of pastor when he, he was uh, the uh, present worship pastor and he came to this Yashuk. We were asking him, can you postpone the opening of that church so that he can be with you for a longer time? <laughs> but uh, he said the calling has come and uh, we have seen how God has used him and we bless God for his life. And we pray that may God bless Shuka Church Oh, sorry. May God bless Pastor Mawila. Pastor McNeil is also a very great man. We know him very, very well. From the time he was a young person like you here, he served <laughs> in our church very well. We sent him as a, how do you call it? Is it a mission or a, to Tanzania? Then he came back. Then he came to Shuka. So you are blessed with great, great people. One as if you me, I will just to encourage you to live for God. Thank you, Vivian, for the great word that you have given to us. And uh, I just want to tell you that God is a great God. Because his ki- the foundation of his kingdom is righteousness and justice. One as if you you know someone who has set his kingdom foundation as lusciousness and justice is a lovely person. He was to use that word for God. And he says, 
that faithfulness, no, uh, love and faithfulness go before him. When I went to pastor's home today, I smelled a uh, he goat from far. He has a big he goat, and I could smell it from far. It means the smell of that goat is going before it, so that before you even get to where it is, you already know there's a he goat around. So God's faithfulness, love and faithfulness goes before him. So before you even meet God, you already experience his faithfulness and his love. So can we clap for God? He's such a great person. We can live for him and he's trustworthy. And you can see my gray hair. I'm quite... Uh, so I'm telling you from experience. Let's live for God. Let's love him. Let's give him our heart because that is all he asks for. So God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your invitation. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Iria. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I love that ego analogy. It's very powerful because we went somewhere and the Wairia was telling me, by the way, Bishop, bado nanuka ile senge yako. <laughs> and I think that's, that should, that, that's exactly what should happen when you encounter God. Yeah? Uh, you see, when you encounter God, wherever you go, you just need to smell like, like God. <laughs> that's the analogy he was giving. Did you understand it? Yeah, that's why he was using the goat. So when we went very far, he was telling me, Hey, brother, na nuka, hile kitu niliguza. Ukiguza mungu, unafa kukatu kama ye. Thank you, Iria. Thank you, Iria. He's a good man. Um, for those that are planning to get married, when you want a negotiator during dowries, uh, talk to us. Eh? If you are planning to get married, especially in central Kenya, uh, come talk to us. Uh, come talk to us. Eh, yeah, come talk to us. We will get you a negotiator. This man, who you? Uliza Dan. Uliza Dan. Yeah, he has negotiated uh, so many uh, for young men marrying from central Kenya. And uh, we have negotiators here. So, if you go to the house, you will be able to get the house. You will be able to get the house. You will be able to get the house. I see there is a cup of coffee at the back there. Is it at the back? Yes. Uh, please um, enjoy a cup of coffee as you fellowship with each other. And do we have anyone who is joining us today for the very first time? You've never been at GCI Chuka. This is your very first time. Can we see you? Your very first time to be here. Anyone? I'm asking because I want to make you very comfortable. So don't be worried. Anyone? Uh, I think all of us knew any age. Ukiona mtu anaka kama mgeni tafadhali akikisha ako comfortable. Sawa sawa. Even those that are here for the second time or that time, please make them feel loved, make them feel comfortable, don't allow them to take coffee alone, join them and uh, celebrate them for coming. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.